Okay, in this video, we're gonna look at some examples using the cross product. So let's just recall that if we've got a vector A and a vector B with components defined as follows, then the cross product can be expressed as this three by three determinant. The first row is our unit basis vectors i, j, k. The second row is a, and the third row is vector b. And then the big thing here is that our vector a is orthogonal to a cross b, so when we dot product them, we get zero, and the same thing with vector b. And also, uh, the area of a parallelogram defined by a and b is given by the magnitude of a cross b. And furthermore, you can use that to find the area of a triangle defined by a and b by taking half of that area. So this first example we want to look at says the following. So we want to determine a vector of magnitude 5 that is orthogonal to a plane containing the y-axis and this point A, which is minus three, one, and five. Okay, good. So uh, let's draw a picture of this maybe. Okay, so here we, here's what we've got for our picture. So we have the y-axis, this is the x-axis and the z-axis, but I've labeled the y-axis, and then our point A, which is negative three, one, five, so that's like negative three back in the negative x-axis, one in the y-axis, and then five up. And so we know that our plane is going to contain this entire axis and this point. So what that tells you is that, <coughs> Any vector that's pointing along the y-axis will be parallel to the plane. So let's maybe call this vector v, and notice v could be taken just to be 0, 1, 0, which is also the unit basis vector j, and notice that v is parallel to the plane. And also, if we draw a vector from the origin up to A, that vector is also going to be in the plane as well. And we know that because the origin is in the plane, because the plane contains the y-axis and the y-axis contains the origin, and A is in the plane. And then any two points in the plane, the line between them is also in the plane. So that means this vector, maybe we'll call it W, which is going to be equal to the vector version of this point, minus 3, 1, 5, is also going to be in the plane. Or I should say parallel to the plane. Okay, good. So, again, let's reiterate. So we know this vector V, which is J, and this vector W are both parallel to the plane. So now if we take a cross product of them, that vector will be orthogonal to the plane. So that's what we wanna do is take a cross product of these two to create a vector that's orthogonal to this plane. So we'll do V cross W. So notice that's going to be, so we'll use our uh, matrix determinant version of the cross product. So we've got i, j, k, and then we have 0, 1, 0 for vector v, and then minus 3, 1, 5 for vector w. Great, and now we'll do a so-called cofactor expansion. In other words, we'll expand along the first row and the first column. So that means in the i direction, we have, this is uh, 1 times 5 minus 0 times 1, so that is 5 in the i direction. Okay, now if we do the same thing along the second column and the first row, so that means in the j direction, remember there's a minus sign built into this, we have 0 times 5 minus 0 times negative 3, so that's just 0. Good. And then finally, in the k direction, which is what we get from crossing like that. We're going to have, so let's see what that is. So that has a plus sign built in. And now we're gonna have zero times one minus one times negative three, so that's going to be three. So notice that's going to turn into the vector five, zero, three. Great, so that is our vector that's orthogonal to the plane. Now we want to make it have a magnitude five. So we did some examples like this in a previous video. So I'll just write it down and then uh, I'll talk through it. So what we wanna do is take five over the magnitude of this vector. So notice the magnitude of that vector is the square root of five squared plus three squared. So that is 25 plus uh, 
9, so that is, let's see, 34, and then times our vector, 503. So let's just recall what that does. So putting a 1 over 34 times our vector turns it into a unit vector, in other words, a vector of length 1, then multiplying it by 5 makes it a vector of length 5. Now you could bring that inside if you wanted to, and that would give you let's see 25 over root 34 0 15 over root 34 good but now this vector is not unique notice it says determine a vector of magnitude 5 we could have one that's also pointing in the opposite direction so we could have plus or minus each of these which uh, starts from having a plus or minus 5 there, and that gives us one vector pointing in one direction that satisfies our rule and one pointing in the other direction. Okay, I'll clean up the board, and then we will look at another example. Okay, so for this next example, we want to consider three points, so 3, 1, 2, negative 1, 0, 4, and 1, 1, 0. Take two of them, A and C, and create the line defined by them and then find the distance from B to that line. So in other words, the distance from B to AC. So let's sketch up what's going on here. I'm not going to put it in R3 um, with the exact location of these points but because all we need really is just a sketch up. So let's say we have our line and let's say A is right here on the line and C is right here on the line. And then B is going to be somewhere um, maybe down here. I've put them in between A and C, but it might not be. Okay, good. And how do you define the distance from a point to a line? Okay, you do it by uh, measuring the distance along the line segment that is orthogonal to this line. So this right here will be the distance that we want to find. Okay, great. So how can we do that? Well, we can do that by envisioning this two different ways. So I'm first going to complete this into a triangle and then calculate the area of this triangle two ways. So the first way is using the standard one-half base times height. So we'll do one-half uh, base times the height, but that's going to be one-half. And then since I've written my D like this, uh, my base is going to be the distance from A to C, which is also the length of the vector AC times the height, but that's just uh, this number D. Okay, great, so now let's calculate that. So that's going to be one half, and then we have the square root of, so we want the vector between A and C, so we'll do that by doing C minus A in a sense. So let's see, that gives us one minus three is negative two, one minus one is zero, and zero minus two is two. So we have, uh, <clears throat> so we have the length of that vector times D, Okay, great, but now notice that this is one half, and then the length of a vector is given by the square root of the dot product with itself. So notice that's gonna be the square root of two times two uh, plus zero times zero plus two times two, so that's gonna be the square root of eight times D. So notice when all is said and done, here we're gonna get the square root of two times D, because the square root of eight is two times the square root of two. Okay, so we've calculated the area one way so far. Now we're going to calculate the area another way. So area take two, we'll do it by looking at this vector right here from A to C, this vector right here from B to, sorry, from A to C, and using the fact that the area of this triangle is one half the magnitude of that cross product. So this is going to be one half then the magnitude of the cross product of the vector from A to C with uh, the vector from A to B. Good. And recall, the, without the half, we get an area of a parallelogram, but with a half, we get the uh, triangle like that. Okay, good. So now this is going to be one half the magnitude of, so let's calculate AC. Well, we already did that over here. So that's going to be minus 2. 
zero, two, cross, and now we need A, B, so that would be like B minus A. So notice here we're gonna get minus four in the first component, We'll get minus one in the second component, and we'll get two in the third component. Okay, so we have something like that. So now notice that is going to be equal to one half, and then the magnitude of, so we have to take a cross product here, so we'll do I, J, K, and then here we have two, zero, minus two, and here we have minus four, minus one, two. Okay, great. And then really we're taking the magnitude of the vector that we get out of that. So notice that's going to be one half, and then we have the magnitude of the vector. So our first component is going to be given by crossing out the first row in the first column, taking that determinant. So notice here we're going to get zero times two minus negative two times negative one. So that's going to be minus two in the end. Great, and then notice for the second bit, we're gonna cross out the second column in the first row, and we'll get um, two times two, which is four, minus negative two times negative four, so that's gonna be four minus eight is negative four, but then we have a built-in minus sign, so that's gonna be positive four, and then finally, Crossing out this second, this last column in the first row, um, we'll have in the k direction two times negative one, which is negative two minus zero times negative four, so that's going to be negative two. So we have something like that. Good. And then finally, that's going to be one half the square root of. Now we can do 2 squared plus 4 squared plus 2 squared, so let's see what that is. 2 squared is 4, plus 16 is 20, plus 4, so that's going to be the square root of 24. Great, but now uh, notice we can take a square root of 4, which is 2, out of that, and write this as the square root of 6. Okay, fantastic. Now putting these two things together, we get d times the square root of two equals the square root of six. So in the end, which I'll fit up here, we'll have d equals the square root of six divided by the square root of two, which you can check that's just the square root of three. Okay, good. So that's the end of this example um, and the end of this video.